everybody and welcome. Today is Thursday, July 2nd, 2020, and this is your late night live stream. Tonight's episode, narcs try to override the laws of nature on their invincibility complex. Stay tuned. Welcome everybody as you fill into the room. It's good to see you. Hi, Rain. We will get started here shortly. While we're waiting for the room to fill up, I wanna give a big shout out to my patrons. Thank you all so much for your continued support. If you're interested in becoming a patron, the link is there on your screen. It is also in the description box below. Welcome as you fill into the room. Shouldn't be a long live stream, but I feel like every time I say that, it ends up being like an hour and a half. So I'm actually gonna really do my best to make this relatively quick because I do realize it is late, but a lot of you are off tomorrow. Are you not? You're off on the third for the fourth, which I don't know is happening. I know a lot of places have closed their beaches for the 4th of July. So that should be very, very interesting to see how people handle that. Welcome everybody. Welcome, welcome. We'll get started here momentarily. Hi, Alexis. Hi, Jazzy Q. All right. There's a few of us here, so we are going to go ahead and get started on tonight's topic. So I decided to develop something called a morbidity scale. And it's gonna be on a scale of one to five. One is not morbid at all, five is kind of morbid. This would be like a four. And the reason I don't give this a five is because a five is really reserved for people who have been like victims of something. And I don't consider these individuals victims per se, but it's still, for two of the stories, it doesn't really have the happiest ending of all time. But I think there is a lesson to be learned here and that's what we're going to discuss. Welcome everybody. Tonight's topic, narcs try to override the laws of nature, invincibility complex. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to everyone as you come into the room. I'm trying a different format tonight, and I'd like to give credit to the person who I got this format from. It is a YouTuber named Young Pharaoh. Um, he didn't speak to me and like give this to me. I just seen him do this a couple times, and I was like, you know what? That makes a lot of sense to kind of put the whole article on the slide as opposed to trying to go back and forth between the slide deck and the internet browser. So I'm gonna try it this way. If you guys don't like it, let me know and we'll go back to our normal format. But this is so much easier for me because then I don't have to flip flop back and forth. It won't work for every article because some articles are very, very long. But for those that aren't that long, this should be pretty much okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hey, Rainbow. Hey, Laundry Diva. Hey, Jazzy Q again. And Nance. Hey, Nance. All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So the purpose of tonight's live stream, actually, let me go back one slide just so we can just kind of set purpose. The purpose of tonight's live stream is simply to discuss a few cases of individuals who were very open, very adamant, very outspoken, against the various health guidelines that are currently in place regarding our current health crisis, okay? This video will probably be demonetized anyway, but I'm still gonna try my best to speak in code. But once I start reading the articles, the algorithm will pick it up and that'll be that, but that's okay because some things are more important than monetization. That could be a t-shirt. Some things are more important than monetization. And I think this is one of them. And part of the reason I feel that way is because, like I said last time, <laughs> hey, Ronald, you're still waiting on your change. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Um, like I said in one of our last live streams, as it stands currently, the populace is very confused, really, truly. So even well-intentioned individuals are having a difficult time knowing what to do right now. So this video is really not about those people who have been confused by all the different instructions coming out from different directions and 
you know, just kind of went for it and made a mistake. This video is more so about those people who from day one were like, nope, nope, not doing it, not doing any of it. Oh, by the way, sorry. I thanked Ronald, but I didn't thank him specifically for the super chat. Thank you for the super chat, Ronald. I appreciate it. This video is about those individuals who from day one said that they weren't going to comply. And I'm pretty sure I told you that was going to happen. I need to go back and look at the first video I did on this topic. But I knew I knew it. I was just like, well, <laughs> we're going to have a lot of problems out of these folks because anything, anything that changes the routine, that asks you to be a little bit more considerate, a little bit more courteous, I knew we were gonna have a problem out of the narcissistic individuals in our society. So it was no surprise to me, but what is surprising to me is the intensity in which it has picked up this resistance, right? But your resistance to all of this actually has consequences. And that's what we're going to get into this evening. Welcome to everybody. Hi, Australia. So the first article we're going to look at is from April 21st, 2020. It is entitled, Man Dies from Coronavirus After Calling It a Political Ploy. So again, on the morbidity scale, the whole stream is probably like a four, maybe more a three, but probably like a four. An Ohio man was dis an Ohio man who dismissed the coronavirus pandemic as a political ploy and ripped his state's lockdown as BS has died of COVID-19, according to reports. John W. McDaniel, 60, passed away last Wednesday in Columbus, exactly a month after reportedly firing off a series of angry messages about the contagion. Does anybody have the guts to say this COVID-19 is a political ploy? Asking for a friend, prove me wrong, he wrote on March 13th. Two days later, McDaniel reportedly called BS on Ohio Governor Mike DeWine's stay-at-home order closing bars and restaurants. John, oh wait, sorry, that was like a different thing. He doesn't have that authority. If you are paranoid about getting sick, just don't go out. It shouldn't keep those of us from living our lives, he wrote. The madness has to stop. The posts have since been deleted, but were saved and shared widely on social media, including by coronavirus talking head, Dr. Dina Grayson. McDaniel's obituary confirmed that he died with his loving family by his side from complications from COVID-19. He was the first COVID-19 fatality in Marion County. In sharp contrast to his reported posts, his family pleaded in his obit for everyone to continue practicing social distancing to keep each other safe. McDaniel leaves behind a wife and two sons and will have a live streamed funeral service on Wednesday. You could not have known a more loving and loyal husband, father, son, brother, uncle, and friend, the obituary said. Simply put, McDaniel loved life and loved everyone he knew with his whole heart. He didn't love his life that much. And that might sound really cold for me to say, but he didn't. He didn't value it that much because my position from the very beginning has been 50-50. I'm like, hmm, okay, I've been pensive, but I'm going to err on the side of caution. I'm going to err on the side of caution because I actually do value my life right? So this is our first story. Welcome to everybody. <laughs> oh, one of these comments is going to make me laugh and I'm not trying to laugh because, you know, it is serious and people have passed away. But at some point, it just becomes a situation where it's like, <sighs> it's almost like a divine comedy, if you will. Because as the title indicates, you really believe you are above the laws of nature. You really believe you're invincible. You really believe absolutely nothing can stop you and certainly not some silly virus, right? Let's move on to our next article. The title of this article, man who went to party warned people not to be an idiot like me a day before dying of COVID-19. Okay, this was published today actually July 2nd, 
It says, sharing his regret on Facebook, Thomas Massius was focused on his loved ones. Because of my stupidity, I put my mom and sisters and my family's health in jeopardy, the California truck driver wrote in a post his family shared with the Washington Post. He'd gone out to a party where no one wore masks, only to learn afterward that someone knowingly attended with the novel coronavirus, apparently reasoning erroneously that without symptoms, it couldn't do anyone harm. But 51-year-old Massius was also at risk, made extra vulnerable by his diabetes and weight, Lopez said. The morning after that June 20th Facebook post, he called his mother saying he couldn't breathe. She told him to rush to the hospital. By 9 p.m., family say, he had died. Perhaps, Lopez said, her uncle would not have gone out if their Southern California county had not been reopening and if people hadn't thought the virus's threat was easing. It was absolutely preventable, Lopez told the Post. Family said Massius was diligent for months about minimizing his trips outside the home, knowing his health conditions made him vulnerable. But Massius was also a social creature, they said, calling his mom every day and eager to see his loved ones. He made friends wherever he went, just like his father. His uncle Ricardo Massius told the Post over Facebook Messenger, you could hear him coming from a mile away when he was laughing said Lopez, who was looking forward to moving 10 minutes away from her uncle next week. California was also starting to emerge from shutdown when Macias would have been weighing attendance at the party. Macias said he went out a couple of weeks before his June 20th Facebook post. Riverside County, where he lived in Lake Elsinore, was approved late in May to enter phase two of California's reopening process, which meant people could head back to malls and dine at restaurants, gyms, nail salons, and more followed in June. The coronavirus situation in Riverside, however, was worsening that month. On June 17th, the Desert Sun reported the county went on a state watch list after cases increased and hospitalizations rose 19% in three days. Riverside is now among the 19 counties covering more than 70% of California's popu population that Governor Gavin Newsom announced this week would have to shut a large swath of businesses back down as the state shatters its records for new known coronavirus cases reported each day. Even before Macias' death, Lopez said, we thought it was a mistake opening so soon. There's still no vaccine and there's still nothing to fight against this. We should not have opened to begin with, she said. It's not clear how many people were at the party Macias attended in Lake Elsinore, where he lived about an hour's drive southeast of Los Angeles. Lopez said her family heard from Macias that a friend who also attended later reached out to say everyone should get tested because that person went despite having a coronavirus diagnosis. At the very least, Lopez said, the friend should have worn a mask, a precaution that California mandated two days before Macias' Facebook post, and that's now been embraced by leaders across the political spectrum. Lopez said her uncle had previously worn a mask, but seemed to think it was not necessary anymore, especially among friends. She knows people are still resistant to masks and it frustrates her. I really honestly don't understand why people find it so difficult, Lopez said. Masia said he was tested for the virus June 15th and got a positive result three days later. Soon he was broadcasting his mistake to hundreds of Facebook friends. This is no joke, he wrote to them. If you have to, if you have to go out, wear a mask and practice social distancing. Don't be an idiot like me, he said. He finished with, hopefully with God's help, I will be able to survive this. The Post could not immediately verify Masias's cause of death with authorities. The Riverside County Office of Vital Records confirmed to NBC that he died of COVID-19, 
the disease caused by the coronavirus. Now his family is fundraising for the funeral on a GoFundMe page where some donors say they have no connection to Masias beyond the shared pain of the coronavirus or the gratitude of reading his final warning to friends. I don't know Tommy or your family, but please take some comfort in knowing that his post will probably save lives. One person wrote as they made a $20 contribution. Lopez said masks and social distancing will be required July 10th at the Sun City service where there will be no hugs and people will be asked to pay their respects quickly and leave the room. Okay. Now, unlike the first gentleman, this gentleman, according to the article, was taking precautions. He was, let's see, where does it say it? Uh, he was diligent for months about minimizing his trips outside the home, knowing his health conditions made him vulnerable, but he was also a social creature. Okay. And then further down, it says that he just seemed to think that masks weren't necessary anymore. Just it's over. So while I do feel a little bit more sympathy for this gentleman, the same mindset is kind of driving it, which is, well, I think I just decided that it's okay now. Even though the experts are saying otherwise, every day they're coming out and saying otherwise. And yes, I know every day the information is conflicting but you know what my general takeaway after I review the news for the day regarding this is? My general takeaway is it's still not over, period. That, that's my only takeaway. Increasing, decreasing, getting better, getting worse, whatever the case may be, it's still not over. You don't get to decide that. You don't get to make that decision just because you don't want this to be the case anymore. Nobody wants this to be the case. Everybody's been impacted, guy. I've been impacted as well financially by COVID. But I would rather be financially impacted by COVID than dead. Thank you for the super chat, Ronald. I appreciate it. It says, <laughs> you can't come on here and tell us you're only going to be on here for a few minutes. You know, we want you on here 24 seven. You know, I was thinking about doing like a marathon one day, just starting the live stream, like around noon, talk to you guys for about an hour, go fold some laundry, come back, play a little music, talk some more, come back. So I might do something like a marathon one day. We'll see. We'll see. But thank you for the super chat, Ronald. I appreciate it so much. So again, the general takeaway is this thing is still not over. And if I were you, what I would be advocating for right now is that the federal government step up and do their job in terms of taking care of the people financially while this is taking place. Because the more we try to push this thing and just decide as a people it's over, an attempt to override nature, science, biology, all of those things. This is going to keep happening. I should have put the slide on here and I might send myself the picture really quick, but there are 40 teachers out in California who've been exposed to CV because they had just had to have an in-person meeting to plan how they were gonna open the new school year. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to put that slide up. I'm going to put that slide up. Give me just one second while I arrange that, because I think it's important because it speaks to my overall point, which is just because you've decided it's over doesn't mean it is. Let's see. Give me one second. I know exactly where it is. It shouldn't take me long. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to the chat. Welcome to the show. I know there's a lot of individuals out there who just flat out do not believe that this is a real thing. Um, they message me every time I do a show like this and inform me that I'm an idiot, that they're disappointed in me, that they can't believe that I would fall for this, so forth and so on. Even though I've stated on more than one occasion, I have my own 
concerns. I have concerns. Okay. You're talking to somebody who does entertain conspiracy theories. I do entertain them. Okay. The difference between myself and a lot of other people is that I feel like I know when it's crossing over into schizophrenia, like, Oh, Okey-dokey. Now it's starting to get loopy. All right. So in other words, I guess what I'm saying is I do still feel somewhat grounded in reality. And that's not to say that all conspiracy theories are not real because a lot of them have actually turned out to be true. It's not the point. It's not actually what we're talking about. All right. So sending this to myself. Okay. Sent. Let me download it from my email. Welcome, everybody. Happy long weekend. I know a lot of you are going to get the benefit of a long weekend this weekend. So congratulations on that. Are you guys going out to do anything? Are you going to go celebrate? Are we not celebrating this year? I saw a post online that was like, you know, with everything that's going on, they listed it out. And then they were like, and y'all are still celebrating Independence Day? Okay. Like, we will pretend, baby. We'll pretend that everything's fine no matter what. <laughs> no matter what. It's fine. Let's see here. Insert picture. Picture from file. Downloads. Yes. Boom. Insert. Ugh. Outstanding. Okay. Let's get back to the show. Now I've rearranged. Let me go here. Full screen. And let me put you guys back on the screen. Okay, so this is what I was just talking about. It says, just in more than 40 South Bay school principals are in quarantine after being exposed to COVID-19 during an in-person meeting to plan the reopening of schools. <laughs> now I'm gonna laugh. I'm laughing now because nobody died from this one, okay? <laughs> So you met in person to plan the reopening of schools and expose 40 of yourselves to COVID-19. Congratulations. Good job. Good job. This is going to drift off into the conspiracy side, but I'll never not be convinced that this isn't something airborne, you guys. Like pollen, you know how pollen floats around in the air? I'm convinced. I'm convinced of it. And what convinces me of it the most is the mask thing, the mask mandate. Because like I've shared with you all in a previous stream, these people are scared. I don't know if y'all can recognize when people are afraid. They are scared. Scared. They're scared. And they cannot panic the public. Because when the public panics, bad things happen. Like we mildly panicked when it first happened and look what happened to all the stores, you see? But they don't care about the stores. What they really care about are things like stocks and stock prices and things like that. They don't want people to start selling off their, so their stocks and do a big bank run. That's what they're afraid of. Um, because we all know that's all they really care about is protecting the money. But, you know... Um, they're afraid, you guys. They're afraid. They don't know what this is. I keep telling y'all that. They, they don't know what this is. They don't know what they're dealing with. They don't. They don't know where it came from. Of course, yes, they blame China. You can blame China all you want. It doesn't necessarily make it true. They don't know where it came from. They don't know where it's coming from. And why it just seems to keep appearing and like popping up in like random pockets of the country. Because if you think about it, right, why would there ever be exposure in a rural area? Think about it. We're talking rural. I have such a hard time saying that word. <laughs> rural, you know, relatively closed off from the rest of society for them to get basic like supplies, groceries. They probably have to travel 30 minutes to an hour, if not more, to reach like town to get things. So that would mean that there would have to be like one person who's traveling to all these different locations, spreading it around because people, what am I trying to say? 
I guess what I'm trying to say is I'm having a tough time understanding how it penetrated certain pockets of society when they are not as exposed as everyone else. Like everyone um, condensed in the big cities. That makes sense to me. There's lots of cross contamination going on there. But how are these little rural counties and these little rural areas with people who barely leave their house, how are they catching it? To me, the only way that could be possible is if this is something that's actually airborne. So I'll give you another conspiracy theory and then we'll come right on back to reality. Do you guys remember when we had all those earthquakes like a year or two ago? They were like all over the place and kind of bad. What if those earthquakes released something that had been contained in the earth for a very long time? Think about it. The earth is breaking apart. Things that have been set and settled in one place for centuries suddenly is now exposed to the open air. What if these earthquakes released something into the air and now they can't get control of it? Think about it. It's just something to think about. So coming off the conspiracy wheel, coming back to our news. Yeah, you meant to plan the reopening of schools and expose yourself to this virus. Congratulations. Good job. Okay. Got to do better. We got to do better than this. Got to do better. Okay. So let's move on to our one, two, three, fourth and final story. I'll read your comments and then we will get out of here. Okay. So last but not least, Herman Cain hospitalized for COVID-19 hours after condemning masks. Y'all better stop playing with the universal order. I'm telling you. Because what you're saying to the universe, and for those who believe in God, what you're saying to the universe and God, you're you're thumbing your nose at, up at them and saying, I don't take orders from anybody. Even if it'll save my own life, I am strong, I am invincible. Nothing will happen to me. And you're an idiot for wanting to protect yourself. You're an idiot for wearing a mask. Three hours later, Herman Cain hospitalized for COVID-19 hours after condemning masks. Former Republican presidential candidate Herman Cain has been hospitalized with COVID-19. A spokesman confirmed the diagnosis Thursday afternoon, describing the 73-year-old as resting comfortably at an Atlanta area hospital after his symptoms became serious enough Wednesday to require care, but not a ventilator. Kane's positive June 29th test came just over a week after he appeared at Donald Trump's indoor campaign rally in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Addressing speculation he may have picked it up at Trump's campaign event, Kane's team said in a statement they are unsure how, how or where he contracted the virus. We honestly have no idea where he contracted it. I'm sorry. <laughs> We honestly have no idea where he contracted it, HermanCain.com editor Dan Calabrese wrote on the site. I realize people will speculate about the Tulsa rally, but Herman did a lot of traveling the past week, including to Arizona, where cases are spiking. I don't think there's any way to trace this to one specific contact that caused him to be infected. We'll never know. Don't y'all have con contact tracing in place for that? Didn't y'all just like infiltrate everybody's phones for that? I digress. Kane tweeted a photo of himself attending the event without a mask. Six staffers working at the event testing tested positive the day of the rally and were sent home. And a reporter who covered the event later tested positive, though he's unsure where exactly he'd come in contact with it. On Wednesday, just hours before he required medical intervention because of his worsening condition, Kane sent a tweet hailing a Trump event in South Dakota where masks wouldn't be mandatory. Masks will not be mandatory for the event, which will be attended by President Trump, he said. People are fed up. Yep, people are fed up and laid up, like you, Herman. So it seems that like as soon as people catch it, they immediately start to be able to not be able to breathe. So it's not like a cold where first you get like a sniffle in the back of your nose, then some itching in the back of your throat, 
then you start sneezing, then you start sneezing more, and then you start coughing, then you get a fever, and then you go, oh no, I think I'm catching a cold. And by the time you have that thought, you've already caught it. Then you're blowing your nose and you know, taking cold medicine. It appears that within hours of you catching this thing, you immediately cannot breathe, basically. So I do wonder if Herman will be changing his tune regarding this. Because you must understand how difficult it is for them to actually even come out and tell us this. They didn't have to tell us this. They could have kept this hush hush and quiet. It probably would have gotten out anyway. You know, if I were his campaign and I was crooked as their cam campaigns tend to be, I'd say, you probably want to keep this to yourself because it's going to make everything you've been advocating for invalid. But they told us, and I'm glad that they told us, actually. I'm glad. And I am curious if he will be changing his tune regarding this situation. Because these individuals carry so much influence and so much sway over the people that if all of these people, if Trump on down were very pro-guidelines, pro-mask, pro-whatever it took to get the situation under control, they would all follow in lockstep and they would spend every day harassing the liberals for not following in lockstep with the orders. And that irritates me on a really deep level because it means to me that you don't have any personal ideas, values, anything that you stand on on your own, you follow whatever your dear leaders say. So if your dear leaders say it's a hoax, it's fake, fake news, blah, 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 you go with that. If they turn around and say, hey guys, we were wrong, it's actually real and you need to mask up, they'd all be masked up with Make America Great Again right on the front. And I recognize that's not all Republicans. I recognize that people are across the spectrum with this thing. There are liberals who believe it, liberals who don't believe it, Republicans who believe it, Republicans who don't believe it. So it runs the spectrum. But overall, the messaging from the Republican side of life is that this is not a real thing. It's no big deal. Fake news. Y'all are just trying to take out Trump. You're trying to destroy the economy to destroy Trump. It's not real. This is America. I'm free. I have freedoms, blah, 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 yada, yada, yada. So it gives us real glimpse and real insight into how they would respond to any future event. So understand America, how you're making yourself look right now in terms of how we appear to our genuine enemies, whoever they may be. What you've all basically just told them is that we could release a biochemical weapon in America and it will take out half the population because half of the population wouldn't believe it. Half of the population wouldn't take any precautions. They wouldn't believe it. They could come on the news every night and say, we have been attacked. A biochemical weapon has been released. Please stay in your homes. It seems to float around when the sun is out. When the sun goes down, it seems to dissipate. I don't know, whatever. Whatever the particular characteristics of it would be, right? You know, if they asked us to wear goggles or something, which, you know, that's a little, that would be challenging because people wear glasses and all that. But you get my point. If it were something like that, if they said, we, we know we've been attacked, we just don't know by whom, or even we know by who, we've been attacked by fill in the blank. They released a biochemical weapon into the air. Here are the guidelines required to protect yourself during this time. Half of the country would buck the guidelines, say it's not true, it's not real, fake news, just trying to take out the president, blah, blah, blah. So what you've done is made yourself very vulnerable because you've shown the world how to get you, basically. You've shown the whole world how to get you. It's easy. All you have to do is release a bioweapon. Half of the Americans will take it seriously and protect themselves. The other half will not, and they'll be wiped. And maybe that's what this is all about. All the conspiracy theorists are screaming depopulation, depopulation. Well, it's working. <laughs> Can't be mad if it's working, can you?
It's kind of ingenious, actually. It's like reverse psychology on 10. Right? So that's really all my thoughts, all I wanted to share. I want to continue to caution you guys. I know most of you don't believe it. I know a lot of you do. But I would hope that you would err on the side of caution because it seems that once this thing gets in you, it's not leaving. Isn't there an actor who's been in the hospital for months? He had his legs amputated. Now it's attacking his lungs. And I saw, I think his first name is Nick. And then I saw today his wife said that now he needs a double lung transplant. A double lung transplant. Okay. So I'll say this one more time, then I'm going to go through your comments. I recognize that we have been lied to a lot. I recognize that we have been toyed with. I recognize that we don't always get the whole story. I recognize that. I acknowledge it and I validate that. Okay. I have my own suspicions. Okay. But what if you are wrong about it not being real? Let's look at it like this way. You could think about it as if it's not real and be 100% correct and you're fine. You were right, okay. But you could think about it as being not real and be 100% wrong, okay? So if you are right, you're right. But if you're wrong, you're very wrong. And it, the consequences of being wrong are tremendous. So just think that, think about that and take that into account as you move about your day-to-day -day life, okay? And for those who still flat out refuse, no, I won't do it. I'm not wearing a mask. I'm not doing any of those things. Can you at least commit to upgraded hygiene standards for everybody. Is that too much to ask also? And what I mean by that, so I'm very specific, is that when you're in the grocery store, you're not coughing. When you're in the grocery store, you're not sneezing. If it comes upon you and you can't control it, you're committing, because you refuse to wear a mask, you're committing to covering your sneeze. You're committing to us that if you cough into your hands or you sneeze into your hands, you won't touch anything until you wash them. That's the commitment I feel like you owe us. Because I respect your point of view, that you think it's not real. Okay, that's your right. But do you respect mine in asking that even though you don't believe it is, can you please at least respect me, my life and my humanity enough to protect me from whatever is spraying out of you? Can we make that commitment? I think that's a fair trade-off because the truth of the matter is we can't force them to wear masks. Y'all have defunded the police, so the police are not going to come arrest you for not wearing a mask. So essentially, you really don't have to. So since you don't have to, can you at least commit to the other things? Can you commit to not licking your fingers and touching the buffet handles if there are any buffets open right now? Can you commit to that? And if you can't, that tells me exactly who you are, which is who I told you you were the very first video I did regarding this topic. And if you don't know who that is, it's a demonic narcissist is what you are. If you refuse to wear a mask, you refuse to cover your mouth, refuse to cover your sneezes, refuse to wash your hands, you're a psychopath, actually. You might have some sociopathic tendencies in there. You need to get checked out. Something's wrong. Because I, I don't think that's asking too much. If let's, say, let's just play devil's advocate and say that I was anti-mask. Let's say PTE was anti-mask, right? At minimum, what I, would be, what I would be doing, even though I would be anti-mask, is you know what? I'm not wearing a mask out here, but if I feel a sneeze, I'm going to cover it. If I feel I'm about to cough, I'll cover that. If I cough in my hands, I'll, I'll wash my hands before I continue picking up groceries and putting them back down again, touching the pen pad at the checkout counter. I can commit to that much. That's not asking too much. It's not. And if it is, you're a demonic, psychotically possessed narcissist. And it's amazing that this is what brought it out. 
of all the things that we've been through as a society, in a country, in a world, of all the things that we've been through, this is the thing that brought it out the most. I think that is so interesting. I really hope they continue to study the phenomenon. Because I mean, really guys, really think about it. Think about all the elections. And yeah, the elections tend to bring out the crazies too, but the craziness is kind of like expected and predictable. You know what I mean? It's getting worse, but never have the demons hopped out like they've hopped out regarding this situation, never. And it's got to make you wonder why. Why are these demons hopping so badly over the situation? I'll never know. But with that, I'm going to go through your comments very briefly and then we'll get out of here. Look at that. See, look at me committing to a, a short, sweet live stream. Why so much more in the USA? Because the USA is filled to the brim with narcissistic individuals. That's why. People who've never been told no before people who've been running the same routine every single day for 30 years, 40 years, 50 years, and now being asked to do something just a little bit different. People who have no problems following other rules, but for whatever reason, the rules that help protect other people, they have trouble following that. So that is the answer to your question. Why so much more in the USA? Because the USA is capped out and filled to the brim with narcissists and it's starting to show. So this is the comment that almost made me lose it <laughs> earlier in the live stream. It said, spirit indeed proved him wrong. Ask and you shall receive right. Right? Like, don't they say don't tempt the Lord? They say, uh, oh, how does it go? The Lord will protect you, but don't tempt. Don't tempt him. Is that in the Bible? I'm not sure. It's something, it's, the spirit of it is the same, which is, yeah, the Lord will look out for you, but you can't just keep doing stupid stuff and expect God to protect you every time. Eventually that protection is going to run out. Don't tempt the Lord. Don't do it. Let's see here. It says, why do channels that primarily discuss narcissism almost always seem to draw in conspiracy theorists? For example, your last video had someone calling C-19 a hoax and that viruses couldn't be passed on. Listen, I, because we're dealing with, I think narcissism is a spiritual issue. The scientific community will disagree. You can disagree all you want. Your science hasn't helped up until this point. So if your science hasn't helped up until this point, now we have to start exploring other potential answers to the problem. But truly, narcissism is a spiritual issue. So that's why I think it tends to draw a lot of conspiracy theorists, because conspiracy theorists do explore the spiritual realm a bit. But I got to say, I am blown away by people telling me that viruses are not real and they can't be passed on. So one question that I asked specifically to someone who left a comment on my, I don't know, last live stream, second to last, who told me that you can't catch a cold from someone else, you cannot catch a flu from someone else. So I asked them and I said, a couple of years ago, I started a job and I was perfectly healthy and fine. I noticed within the first week that I was there that everyone in that office pretty much was sick and I was disgusted, but we're not here to talk about my disgust. I noticed that everyone was sick. Within a week of me being there, I was sick as a dog, dog sick, to the point where I could not go in. I wouldn't have gone in anyway because I respect my coworkers enough to not spread my illness around onto them. But I was so sick that even if I had wanted to go in, I couldn't because I would talk and sneeze and just ugh, nastiness everywhere. It was bad. So I asked this person what happened there because they're very convinced of this. So I said, they say that all it is, is your body flushing toxins. So I said to them, why then if I kiss my boyfriend who's sick with a cold, I catch his cold or I'd catch his cold within 24 to 48 hours. Why is that? I said, are we passing toxins from one to another? Because I'll entertain it. Listen, I'll entertain anything because I don't believe I know everything and I don't believe we know everything yet. So I'll entertain anything. 
So I said, are we, are you suggesting that we're passing toxins from one to another? Then when the toxin enters your body, we have the cold or flu reaction. Is that what you're saying? No response. So then I rephrased it. I was like, well, when I started at that new job and caught the cold that everybody had in the office, what happened there? Can you explain to me what actually took place? What is the mechanism that happened? Because I'll entertain it. If you're telling me that we're passing toxin from one to another, and then our body is flushing the toxin, I mean, well, isn't that the same thing though? <laughs> but they never said that's what it was. They said, you can't catch anything from anyone. So I suppose HIV and AIDS is not real. Herpes isn't real. Gonorrhea, chlamydia, syphilis, none of those are real. Um, aren't there some contagious like skin situations? Oh, um, ringworm, ringworm isn't real. And I can't give ringworm to someone else. If I have ringworm on my hand and rub up against somebody else, I can't pass that ringworm to them, right? I just need to know. I want to understand. I'm actually not condemning you, criticizing you. I'm not picking on you. I want to understand why you believe that. Let's see here. Right, right, right. Viruses being the way, it said something about viruses being the body's way of detoxing. Okay, then how come if I'm sitting next to someone <laughs> with the flu, I have a high chance of catching their flu? What, what is the mechanism is what I'm asking. They don't reply. No one replies to my direct questions, man. I hate it. I hate it. It drives me nuts. I'll ask just the, the crystal clearest, most direct question and they never ever reply. Let's see here. <laughs> Says my narc father, guy who would scrape mold off of cheese and still eat it, would have been the first idiot to die from COVID in our county had he lived, no doubt. This is why I'm a germaphobe. <laughs> Listen, I had to get on to my father because he's a busybody. And if I'm being very honest, he's, he's a man of, a man of old. And what I mean by that is, He's, what am I trying to say? He's one of the last of the generation of, I guess you could say like strong men in a way, like they really don't think anything can happen to them. You know, they really do believe they're invincible. And I guess if you live to be a certain age, you probably do start to believe that. Like once you get up over your seventies, you start to consider everything that you've overcome, avoided, recovered from, you know what I mean? And you might actually start to think that I am indeed invincible. So he'd be on the phone with me telling me where he was going and what he was doing and no one's going to keep him in his house. And I said, well, dad, that's fine. But keep in mind that you live with my mother. So everywhere you go, technically she's going too. You live with my mother. So you need to think about that. You may not think anything can happen to you, but you live with my mother who is following all of the guidelines to the letter. So chill out, pull it back, calm down and sit down somewhere before this thing or until this thing blows over. You're in your 70s, sir. Okay? But I was actually very upset with him for a little bit. For this very reason. Now, if he lived alone, that'd be one thing. It's like, well, if that's what you want to do to yourself, I hate that you don't value my father that much. But, you know, I can't value you more than you value yourself. So do as you will. But you live with my mother. So as long as that's the case, you need to be taking precautions. At some point, the child becomes the parent. Let's see here.
just scroll in your comments. <laughs> it says, I have several friends who try to shame others for wearing a mask. They take it personally that my mask wearing is like accusing them of being sick. Technically, you wear a mask to protect others. You know what this reminds me of? Individuals who are engaging in intimate activity and either or man or woman, I won't genderize this, will request for the man to put on a prophylactic. And sometimes the reaction to that is, for what? I don't have anything. I need to analyze that. I need to figure out a title for that whole whatever that is, analyze it and like make a video because it's the same logic. Well, I'm not sick. And it's like, yeah, dummy, but what if she is? <laughs> Idiot. What if she is? What if she's making the request because she is, but she doesn't want to give it to you. But some of them will actually have that reaction. Oh, you don't trust me? You think I'm sick or something? I don't have anything. It's not about you having anything necessarily. Same concept, same principle underlies it. Oh, we're getting real tonight. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, they could have gotten on Zoom. Those teachers very easily could have had a Zoom meeting and accomplished the exact same goals, the exact same goals. I know, right? Introverts are, are winning right now. <laughs> it has been an introvert's paradise. Y'all, The I think one of the happiest days of my life, it was a couple weeks ago. Everything was shut down. They hadn't started reopening anything. And the world was just so quiet in a good way, though. Like, it was peaceful. I swear the skies were bluer. I swear they were. They were the bluest I've ever seen them. Even the night sky was like black, black. And the stars were like sparkling against it. The air seemed fresher and more clear. There was practically nobody on the highway. Man, the animals started coming back out to play. I think we reduced uh, global pollution like overnight. Wasn't it almost overnight? If not overnight, it was like a week. Within a week, we did everything the climate change activists have been trying to do in one week. It might've been one day, but I'm pretty sure it was at, at minimum one day, maximum a week. The earth stopped vibrating. They measured that, that the earth has a constant rumble that stopped because we stopped. And it's like, even thinking about it makes me wanna cry. Cause it's like, why don't we value that? Why is that not important to us? It's like, we are natural beings. How do you not value those things? All you value is your bars and your haircuts and your tattoos and what else were they desperate to get back to? I mean, the gym is kind of important. You want to stay physically fit and healthy, but it's not my point. Go run somewhere. Go do some push-ups. for the love of God. Go run up and down some stairs. Like, how do you not value that? How do you not value the animals coming back out? and feeling safe enough to be out. How do you not value that? How do you not value the clear air, the cleaner water? How do you not value that? How is that not important to you? It makes me hate y'all so much. Not y'all in the comments, not my viewers, not my listens, listeners and subscribers. It makes me hate the people who hate that. It makes me hate you with a flaming, fiery, hot passion that I can't describe because it tells me that if we're ever able to come out of this, we're never, ever going to get that again. And that's kind of what makes me emotional because it's like that was once in a lifetime, you guys. That was once in a lifetime, once in a lifetime opportunity to just sit and take in and value your own life, value your family, your pets, your home, your neighborhood, the air, you know what I mean? The water, the ground, the earth that you live in and live on and live off. 
You don't deserve to be here. COVID should wipe you out. I'm kind of disappointed it didn't do more. Because all that's going to happen is when we finally clear this, we're just going to go back to one, back to 100. And even more so, it'll be a deeper overcorrection because of all the lost time. So then the counter argument to that is always PTE. It's not that we don't value that. We just have to eat. We need money. We have to work. And my response to that is the only reason you have to work is because your bankers won't get off of your neck. They refuse to stop these payments in the middle of all of this. Refuse to stop rent, mortgages, credit card bills, insurance, all of these things. They refuse to let up. That's why you have to work. They're talking about millions are going to be evicted in a couple of weeks. Where are they going to go? Where exactly are all of these people going to go? And where is all their stuff going to go? So we talk about the people, right? Where is all of their stuff going to go? If you evict 1 million people, that's 1 million people and 1 million people's stuff. Where are you going to put all that stuff? On the street? I hope you do. And I hope as everyone is eager and anxiously running back to these jobs that they couldn't wait to get back to, you have to pass mattresses, couches, chairs, dinner plates, stuffed animals, clothes, shoes, all up and down your highway. I hope that for you. I want that to be your daily experience. Oh yeah, and the people that came along with all that stuff too. I hope at every red light you stop at, there's a person who had a home two weeks ago who no longer does because the banks won't come off their necks, knocking on your window asking for change. I hope that, I want that to be your daily experience and I don't ever want it to end because you simply refuse to do what's right for the people. Do the right thing. Force these companies to get off of these people's necks. These same companies that just got bailed out to the tune of millions and billions of dollars have the nerve to still ask for money from people who, many of whom have been put out of work. So if that's the reality you want and that's the life and the world you want to live in, I hope you get it and I hope it never changes. I hope there's homeless people sleeping on your front lawn every night, every night. Yeah, you played yourself. Congratulations, you played yourself. Here's your stupid prize. Let's see here. I remember it says no indoor dining for here for us here in the city, New York City. It's mostly men I see without masks, but younger women I also see without them. I see everybody without them. But here's the comment I wanted to make. I'll never forget when this all first started happening and everything was shut down. And there was this one restaurant um, that would let you do uh, pickup. You could place your order and just go pick it up. So when I went to pick it up, um, they weren't bringing it out to the cars at the time you had to go in. So I went in, there was nobody in there except this one family, a mom and like three kids, right? And while I'm standing there waiting for them to get my food, one of the kids was just like, <coughs> and I remember looking over at him. Then I looked at his mom. Then I looked at him again. And I'm pretty sure I mouthed the words, that is so disgusting. I could not believe it. I'm like, really, really? Everything that's going on, you see nobody else is in here. I don't know why they were in there. I don't know if they were friends or family of someone who worked at the restaurant because all the chairs were turned upside down on the table. So I'm not even sure why they were there, but you're in here where people are making food that people are coming to pick up and you're letting your son just <coughs> all out into the open air in the restaurant. People like you need to go. You got to go. You, you got to. You got to go. You're of no, no benefit to the society. Of no benefit. <clears throat> like, yes, yeah, son, go ahead and cough. Who cares if you spread whatever it is you just coughed all the way to the cooks, the kitchen, 
the waiters and waitresses, anyone who walks in here to pick up food, thinking they're being safe, like, okay, I'll just place my order, go pick my food up, take it home. Don't know that there's a little boy in the restaurant coughing into the open air. Need to be arrested. I don't care if you are six, you need to be arrested. Let's see here. Oh man. So the teacher whose hair I cut at her house the other day said kids are not going to be forced to wear mask, masks in class. I wonder how many districts are doing this. I heard some districts are giving parents the option. So they're telling them you can either send your kid to school or you can have them attend online, one or the other. So I'm curious how, how much that is happening across the country. I wonder, Rain, were you talking about CV or like colds and flus? It says, I'm convinced it has something to do with heavy metal toxicity. I'm curious which one you were talking about. Because if it's CV, I think you might be right. Like, I, y'all, okay. <laughs> I know this is going to sound crazy, but, you know, we're family here, right? We're family, right? This is a family. Anyway, no. Um, there is a smell in the air. And it's not always everywhere, right? Like I'll be walking and suddenly I'll smell it. And I'm like, ugh. My, my initial reaction is ugh, because it smells like a horrific perfume to me. Like it smells like one of those super cheap perfumes that people like to wear sometimes that really irritates your ears, nose, eyes, and throat. Like sometimes I'll be walking my puppy and I'll just be walking down the street and all of a sudden I'll smell it and at first, when I first started noticing this, this was months ago, I would be like, why is everybody wearing this God awful perfume? <laughs> I was like, what is it? I said, the next time I smell it on somebody, I'm going to ask them what it is just so I can avoid it. Right. But the thing is, I've never actually smelled it on anyone. I've always only smelled it in the air. So then, of course, I have to wonder. Is it, a, is it a tree? Is it some sort of blooming flower that's somewhere? But I smell it in random places all over the city. And I don't always see like flowers or trees or anything nearby. It's like, I'll just walk into a patch of it. And I'll be like, oh God, there's that perfume. Who is wearing this perfume? Stop, stop making it. God, it's horrific. And it's kind of irritating. Like it kind of sticks to the inside of my nose like the roof of my mouth a little bit, like it kind of irritates my ears a little bit. And I spend the day kind of trying to flush my nasal and respiratory. It's not, I'm not, I'm describing it. It sounds so much worse in terms of symptoms. It's just an irritant. Like if you've ever been kind of irritated by a perfume or a cologne, you just kind of want it out of your nose. That's what I mean. But I can still function, but I notice it every single time every time. And I can't help but wonder. I can't help but wonder. Anyway, maybe we should just do a conspiracy video where I don't drift away. I just stay on it the whole time. But if I do do that, I'll do that on my other channel, which is A Deeper PTE. Check it out, subscribe, and I'll do it over there. So it won't count against um, this one because they are not playing about taking down channels that are speaking out against, um, well, not against, cause I'm not really speaking out against it, but even entertaining the alternate theories, they don't like that either. And they've been swiping people, so. But a deeper PTE isn't monetized, so it doesn't matter. Let's see here. <laughs> right, that's kind of what I'm saying. It says, what if global warming is melting glaciers that have frozen viruses in them. That's what I'm saying. And wouldn't that be just our perfect just dessert? Wouldn't that be perfect? It's like for years and years, these people have been telling you what's happening. People have been denying it. So then it just kept happening until we melted the glaciers that released a virus that killed a bunch of people. I mean, that's karma. That's karma perfected, if I do say so myself. Now, I do believe the universal order is kind of fair. So to me, dang, I should have just done this on a deeper PTE. To me, 
This was the warning shot. Like change, change, repent and turn away from your wicked ways. When people hear the word wicked, all they think about is like smoking, drinking, cursing, ah, premarital sex, ah, crime, ah. Crime, smoking, drinking, premarital sex, and things like that. That's what people think wickedness is. But wickedness also is simply turning away from what is right. Idols, putting idols above you. Oh, PTE, I don't have a golden calf in my living room. No, you don't, but you have a job that you have actually made your idol. You put that job above your family, your kids, your pets, your home, and yourself. You put them first in everything, in all things, and they would just as soon lay you off if they had to. They wouldn't fight to keep you if they came down to the bottom line. That's wickedness, not honoring what's most important, not honoring yourself, your body, your temple. That's wicked. So what if this was the warning shot? We're gonna release this milder version, even though it still kills people, Release this. Let's see if they repent and turn away from their wicked ways. Nope, they dug their heels in. So round two is coming. And you guys think it's all being done by <laughs> the cabal, the Illuminati. I don't. I actually think it's being done by God himself. I do. But now we're getting way down the rabbit hole. This is coming from on high. This is coming from heaven above. The Lord has not been pleased with us. Not at all. And in, in his fairness, he's giving us an opportunity to change before he releases the Kraken. Let's see what we've got going on here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see here. Maybe to prevent from getting it again, honey. They say people are getting reinfected. Says, why should I wear a mask if I've already had it? Maybe to prevent reinfection. Because they said that in the initial cases, there were people who got it, recovered, and then got it again. So maybe so you don't get it again. Um, that's what I'm here for. See, this makes me feel good. It says, thank you for giving me something to think about. It's scary, but it reminds me that the world does not revolve around me and my issues. That's what I'm here for. That's what I'm here for. Thank you for being open-minded enough to hear me out and, and just consider my opinion. You know what I mean? You know how many people can't do that? So kudos to you for even being open-minded enough to even consider my opinion. <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> oh yeah, I meant to comment on that. It said, it got started in New Rochelle with one person who returned from somewhere and went to a large gathering, spreading it to many people. It spreads exponentially. Do y'all remember in the other article it said that uh, the gentleman, the second guy, it said that a person went to that party knowing that they had it. Is that not psychopathic? Like, at what point do we cross the line into criminal behavior? I'm curious. You know you have an infectious disease, you went to a party anyway, and now one of your friends is dead. Like, isn't that manslaughter? I'd argue for manslaughter if I was the attorney. It's not like he just got super sick and missed a bunch of days of work, which you would still owe for that, but we're ne neither here nor there, but he actually died. So isn't that manslaughter? <laughs> See, okay. And this is what I mean when I say I understand why people are confused and don't know what to do, because I saw that too. It says, I read something that said it spreads by farting, LOL, SMH. These officials are guessing at this point. They also said that people who are balding have a higher chance of getting it. So I'm like, okay, guys, farting, balding. I forgot another one of the unusual risk factors. But to me, that screams, this is not a virus 
This is something else, y'all. Remember all them chemtrails they used to spray in the air all the time? Did they just finally take effect? All that crap that they would just leave hanging in the air? Did it finally all just drop down to ground level and get everybody sick? Like, I don't know. Mm, interesting. It says PTE. This reminds me so much of an episode of Criminal Minds. Oh, she's got the season and the episode. <laughs> season four, episode 24, titled Amplification. Why can't I talk? Amplification regarding chemical warfare. A narcissist scientist in a rage caused by years of his research being invalidated. Right. Right. Y'all forget that they have a lot of this stuff in test tubes sealed off in buildings, you know, we don't necessarily know. I'm telling you my theory of all the conspiracy theories that I, you know, would entertain regarding this. The one that I believe is true is that it was indeed released. It was not released by your Illuminati. Like y'all want it to be. It was released by someone else. They don't know who though. They can't figure it out. So a big portion of what they've been doing behind the scenes is actually trying to figure out who did this. But you can't tell the people that because then the people would panic and the people would want retaliation. But you cannot retaliate against someone you don't know or against something you don't know. So we're going to stick with this virus theory because it is a theory. And we'll just do our best to manage it based on what we find out about it every day, because it does seem to also be evolving, like it's morphing and changing every day. So we're just going to advise the people as best we can, but we can't tell them the actual truth. That's your conspiracy. But then again, that's just a theory. <laughs> YouTube, YouTube, that's just a theory. I'm not saying that that's true, YouTube. I acknowledge, <sighs> hi, my name is PTE and I acknowledge the official narrative. Jeez. All right, we're going to get out of here soon. <laughs> Let's see. You might have a chance to quit. Says so PTE going to quit my job because of having a narcissistic boss, but I feel like I'm stuck because of COVID. Um, if, if that's because you don't feel like there's going to be a lot of jobs out there, like to kind of transition to, you might be right. Um, even though they claim they added 4.8 million jobs. Okay. All right. I'll, all right. I, I accept your official narrative. However, here's why I think you'll have a chance. I think what's going to happen, which is already happening now, the resurgence is coming and they're not going to be able to deny people support anymore because that at some point becomes a humanitarian issue. You shut down the entire economy by force and by threat of arrest in some cases, some cities and counties. So people couldn't work, even though they wanted to work, they couldn't. So you wiped out their finances and then still expect them to pay their bills that's going to cause a second revolt. It, people are going to revolt again. So if you don't want a second round of protests on your hands, they're going to have to start cutting the check. So when they start cutting that check, I would let them cut it maybe three times and then I would go ahead and quit. <laughs> because honestly, guys, I think we're going to be in this thing until December, if not January. I really do. And one of the reasons I think that is because they never, they never stay on an issue this long. The news cycle loves to move on, you guys. They love to move on. You know, something major will happen. They'll cover it for days and weeks. And then eventually it kind of fizzles out and they kind of move on to their next thing. The news cycle likes to move on. The fact that this has remained in the news cycle for all this time tells me it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Let's see. Very much so. When I was describing my father, 
very much a manly man, but not in the sense of, in the sense of the kind of the mindsets that we've been trying to get away from a little bit. So very traditionalist. Um, I don't want to say too much. All I'll say is very strongly traditionalist, very masculine, almost to his detriment. I'll say that. Oh, you're so welcome. It says, PT, I just want to let you know how much you've helped me in the past two years of working for a narcissistic boss and her flying monkeys. You saved me in so many ways and many, many laughs. Good. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm happiest about the laughs. Because I know how important that is when you are sad or depressed and feeling down and you can get out a good belly laugh. That's important. So that makes me happy that I make you laugh. This lady speaking sounds like the stereotypical narc, LOL. Well, thanks. Your little owls are cute. It's probably how you're sitting back behind your computer right now. Shook. Shook's full. Look at that. Shook's full. Shook. Hey, Shook. I bet you're still in here. So <laughs> welcome. Welcome to the party. You'll be back. Let's see here. I need to update my mods. Yeah, I haven't done that in a long time. We really hadn't had a need for them for a long time, but I need to update my mods. I was thinking about clearing everyone and then just kind of redoing them but then I didn't want to hurt the feelings of my existing mods because they haven't done anything wrong. I just wanted to take the burden off of them because some people feel like they have to like show up for every stream, almost like a job. And it's really not like that. <laughs> it's like, Hey, if you're a mod and you happen to be there, great. But if not, no worries, you know? So I don't want people to feel pressured. Like they have to like be a mod. So I'm, I think I might clear my mods either like every six months or maybe once a year I'll clear them. I don't know, but yeah. I told you he was still in here. See? Hey, Shook. Shug. Let's see here. <laughs> All right. I think we're going to go ahead and wrap that up. Wrap this up, if you will. <laughs> Orange Blossom, I'm going to close on this. I'm going to close on this comment because it's perfect. In regard to this whole entire situation, the narcissists among our society simply don't feel like they have to. They don't feel like they have to. They're above you. They make their own rules. They abide by their own code. And at the end of the day, they simply do not feel like they have to respect you or even themselves. And with that, you guys, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap the live stream. Dang, I have tons more comments though. Oh, I got a super sticker too. All right. Five more minutes. Five more minutes. Okay. Five more minutes. And then we'll go. Five more minutes. That would have been a good one to close on though. They don't feel like they have to. They don't. They absolutely do not. Let me do the super sticker really quick while I see it before it disappears. Thank you so much, Carolyn. I appreciate it. Very much because I guarantee this video will be demonetized. Isn't that sad? Like we can't even just talk. We can't even have a conversation without getting in trouble about this. Oh, it was a week. Is that in regard to the climate? It took one week and we reduced all the pollution in the world. Unbelievable. So really, we don't have to do all the, these different movements and you know activism regarding climate, climate change. We just have to get people to try to curb their bad behavior, but they won't. Let's see. Right, exactly. We could be healing the earth while we are squashing the spread of the virus. Exactly. We could have gotten two things accomplished during this time frame. Businesses could have been recalibrating in a way that they would never have had an opportunity to get or do ever again. Like, hey, oh my gosh. All right. Well, while we're closed, let's get organized. Let's strategize. 
Let's take this time where we're not under the full press of that daily pressure to think about the future and what we can do better in the future. Nope, lamented, lamented over it. And you know why? It's because they don't see it. They don't see the beauty. They don't value these things. They don't see it at all, which is why for many years we have said that these individuals are some form of subhuman in the sense that you are not operating at full capacity. You don't see the lake, the forest, the sky. You don't see any of that. All you see is your nose right in front of you. That's it. They're empty. Exactly. Just emptiness. And you can't appeal to that emptiness. And that's what makes it so sad and kind of scary to me. Like you cannot, we can't appeal to you at all. We can't appeal to your human side. We cannot appeal to your humanity. And that's frightening that we can't, we can't appeal to your humanity. Because what are we supposed to do? If we can't appeal to you on a human basis, what's left? I saw another super sticker come in. Let me see if I can find it. Where is it? Aha. Uh -huh. Oh, two of them came in. Thank you. Thank you to Brandon A. Love your channel. Thank you so much, Brandon. And thank you to Rainbow. I appreciate it, you guys. <laughs> thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, let's see. Let me grab a few more comments, then we'll get out of here, okay? I love that. I love this so much. It says, my gardens are so beautiful this year, and I have done more art in the last few months than I have in the last 20 years. I love that. Like that's to me, that's the life you're owed. Yes, we have to work. We have to earn a living. I've never advocated for just 100% government support. Like, ah, nobody works. We don't work anymore. We just lay at home and collect checks and look at the sunshine all day. I have never advocated for that. I'm advocating for coverage by the government while we're going through this crisis because we don't have any other options right now. I mean, yeah, you can go drive for Uber Eats or whatever, but is that really going to supplement your income? No. Yeah, you can file for unemployment, but is that really going to supplement your income? No. We need help. Donald, if you're listening, we need help. Please be humane. I'm trying to appeal to your humanity right now. If there's anything in there, if there is any humanity in there, I'm trying to appeal to that final seed. All right, let's see. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, I see. I see. That's the logic. Okay. It's only criminal if the disease is tied to sex. So if you spread something via sex, you know, knowingly, then it's criminal. But, you know, if you kill somebody with a airborne virus, yeah, no biggie. No, no charges. I agree. Infectious, dis dis infectious deadly disease spreading should be a crime. Yeah, it should be. Like those people who were going around licking ice cream a few months ago, I hope they're still in jail. No probation for you. No. Because the fact that you would even be inspired to do that worries me and concerns me regarding what else you might be inspired to do in the future. You need to be locked up. You need to be arrested. Really? It says a girl here got arrested for threatening to spit. Good. Good. I mean, maybe they should have just let her spit first so they can have a solid case because her attorney will probably get it thrown out because it was a threat. But good, good. You can't be playing like that right now. Now is not the time. <laughs> Says I was done at balding. Good night. Did you guys see that? If you didn't, just Google balding, bald, COVID-19. You'll find it. Scientists are now saying that People who are bald or balding are a risk factor for this disease. Now, please tell me how those two things are connected. 
And if that doesn't tell you that we're dealing with something else entirely, I don't know what else will. No, no, no. It was in the news. Google it. Let me see if I can find it. I'll just find it real quick. Hold on. Let's see. <clears throat> Excuse me. Give me one second. And let me pull up Safari. Since we're here, might as well. All right. Balding COVID-19 risk. Here we go on WebMD. All right, let me just get this pulled up. And let me try to make it just a little bit bigger. Uh-oh. All right, here we go. WebMD. Male baldness may increase severe COVID-19 risk. June 15th, 2020. Research shows bald men are more likely to die after they get the coronavirus than their hairier counterparts. Since the virus emerged in China, researchers have noticed a higher incidence of death in bald men, reported the Telegraph in England. Scientists now think it's possible that androgens, male sex hormones like testosterone, may increase the ability of coronavirus to attack cells. That means treatment for baldness, which suppress these hormones, might fight off the coronavirus. I can't, you guys. Again, I'll state it again for the record. I understand why people are confused. I'm not condemning those of you who are just like, well, I mean, I don't know. I guess it's okay now. You know, like I just saw a comment who just someone said, like, you know, they felt kind of comfortable, so they were going back out. I don't condemn you. I'm not condemning you. I'm condemning these hard-headed people who rejected it from day one. That's who I'm condemning. The people who flat out just decided from day one they weren't going to cooperate. That's who I'm talking about. I'm not talking about those of you who have been trying to keep, keep yourself informed via the news, via your elected officials, and your elected officials in many ways have given you the impression that it's okay to go back out now. So I'm not I'm not really talking to you guys at all. I'm talking to those who <laughs> blatantly disregarded the guidelines, spoke out about them, spoke down on them, made fun of people who were following them. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about narcissists, basically. That means treatments for baldness, which suppress these hormones, might fight off the coronavirus. Okay, guys. We really think that baldness is a perfect predictor of severity. Carlos, Carlos Wambier, a Brown University professor who had conducted studies on the subject. We think androgens or male hormones are definitely the gateway for the virus to enter our cells. Wow. The risk factor would be called the Gabrin sign named after Frank Gabrin, a bald doctor who was the physician in the United States to die of COVID-19. I think they left out the word first. A bald doctor who was the first physician in the United States to die of COVID-19. So I'm not gonna, re what the hell? Was that you? What was that? <laughs> My dog just woke up out of her nap and I guess something scared her in her dream. She started barking. What did you hear, honey? When my animals start looking around, it freaks me out like nothing else. Like if I hear something, but my animals don't look, then I'm not scared. But if I hear something and then they heard it too, and they start looking around, then I get scared. What's up, puppy? It's all good? You just had a dream? My cat is looking crazy too though. What was up? What's that? Okay, I'm about to go because they're freaking me out. Uh, let me roll through here really quick and then we'll, we'll get out of here. But yeah, guys, uh, baldness. Um, every day, it's changing every day. Right, that's what it seems like. It says it's Agent Orange or something like it. I completely agree. I believe this so much. 
so much. <laughs> oh, absolutely, Rainbow. I'm right there with you. I'm just waiting <laughs> for my, my viral video. I don't know when it'll happen, but I just feel like I'm going to be in a grocery store line one day and some woman is going to come up to me and be like, why do you have on a mask? There's nothing going on. I'm like, ma'am, it's my face, my body. I'd like to wear a mask for my protection. Please give me a little bit of distance. I don't have to back up from you. I'll say, Karen, if you don't back up from me, I'm going to have to lay hands on you, Karen. And I don't want to lay hands on you. I didn't come in this grocery store to lay hands on anybody today. Now, please step away. Give me six feet. And I promise y'all, I actually wouldn't touch Karen until she touched me first. And then that's when you're going to get your viral video. <laughs> Okay, just a few more comments and then we'll get out of here. Indeed. It says more subscribers equals more trolls, sadly. Indeed. I had a troll the other day go from video to video telling everybody that my name was Charnette and that me and her husband, me and my husband have engaged in gang stalking to set her up and harass her and lie on her. And then my husband apparently is another YouTuber who deals with narcissism. I was cracking up y'all. And it would be hilarious if it weren't so sad because that is not my name and I'm not married. I don't have a husband or a boyfriend, but she's 100% convinced of it. And she eventually did it on so many videos that I had to block her. Cause I'm like, sweetie, you're, you're going to hurt yourself behind this. I'm not this person. It's not who I am. Like I can verify this is not who I am. So, but anyway, yep. Well, I guess it's a sign of growth, you know? Yeah, my name is Charnette, apparently, and I'm married, and me and my husband have engaged in gang stalking on this particular woman. Before I blocked her, I should have written her back. Well, call the police then. Call the police. Have the police come to my house. Since you know who I am, send the police to my house. But I didn't. How did I learn so much about narcissism? <sighs> Lifelong experiences with narcissists that led me on a search for answers, like what is going on? You know, and then on top of that, I started to pick up on patterns years ago, long before the channel even started. I started to notice different behavior patterns. And I think it just finally clicked for me the word narcissism, either reading a book, a particular book, or watching a couple of videos online on YouTube. And that's when I realized this is what it is that I've been dealing with this mindset, this behavior, this set of actions. This is narcissism. And it kind of just sent me down a rabbit hole of investigation. And, you know, um, pretty much everything I suspected about these people has turned out to be true. So that's how I learned so much. Unfortunately, I've been a constant target for these people. Constant. <laughs> Five more minutes. And I said I wasn't going to do an hour and a half. And we've been here an hour and 33 minutes. I don't even know why I lied to myself this way. Let's see. I mean, there was even a story that came out that said um, flushing the toilet can spread coronavirus. I'm not lying to you. I'm going to prove it to you right now. Let's see here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Toilet flushing. Coronavirus. Oh, maybe if I could spell. <clears throat> Corona. Nah, there we go. <sighs> see what I'm saying, <laughs> you guys? Let me see if I can get this one because this is New York Times. Sometimes they block it because they want you to pay. All right, here we go again, sharing my screen. Flushing the toilet may fling coronavirus aerosols all over. You see what I'm saying? Do you see why the people are confused? <laughs> Between balding, 
toilet flushing. Do you see why the people are are confused? So I, I'm, I would never condemn the people who are simply confused and just trying to find their place in all of this. Never who this video was about. This video is about those people who, who condemned it and rejected it from day one. And some of whom have actually died now. Let's see. Yep. But apparently flushing the toilet may fling coronavirus aerosols all over, which I guess to them, what, what does that mean then? Is it coming out in our poop or our urine? And if so, then is that why it's getting flung all over? Like it just never ends. <laughs> it never ends. It never ends. So anyway, you guys, I think this is a good spot to go ahead and wrap this up. <laughs> oh, your comments is so good and so funny, though. I don't want to leave. Let's see. Oh, Sean. Sean said, I folded like a scared donkey. Yep, wake up. And not following the corrupt government does not make you a narcissist. Never said it did. I said, the fact that you think that you know so much and the fact that you think that you know everything before we even had all of the facts and decided that you weren't going to go along with any of it. And it's, it's also not that though, Sean, because Sean, you're also the type of person to sneeze into the open air in the grocery store because you feel like you have the right to. See, all of these behaviors are connected together and they come into a, a, um, a personality profile that we like to call a narcissist is what they all kind of shape up to be. So you know, Sean, I'm going to pose this question to you because I've asked it many times and nobody will give me a direct answer. My question to you, Sean, is what is real to you then? What is real? What is real? What qualities does something have to have to actually be considered real to you? And what would it take for you to actually take precautions? Let's play devil's advocate, Sean, you and I. Let's play devil's advocate and say that this thing is realer than we could ever imagine. What would actually convince you of that? I'm so curious. The researcher and the scientist in me has to know the answer to those questions. What is real to you? What traits or characteristics does something have to have in order for you to believe it? And what would it take, assuming this was 100% real and you cannot counter with, but it's not PTE. That's not what I asked you. I asked you, assuming this was real, what would actually make you take precautions? I need the answers to those questions, Sean. All right, let's see here. A lot of people's minds are getting changed in the stream. That's so interesting. I didn't anticipate that. I'm glad you guys, listen, believe it or not, I actually really care about y'all. I don't wanna see y'all get hurt behind anything. I acknowledge, I mean, look at what's on your screen right now. Flushing the toilet may fling coronavirus aerosols all over. Like, I understand why you don't believe it. I do, trust me, I do. Like, I get it. Like, there's a huge portion of me that has a question mark behind all of this, okay? But all I'm saying is, if you're right, you're right. But if you're wrong, you're wrong. And what could be the potential fallout from that? That's all. I want you to protect yourself. Even if, okay, fine. You don't care about protecting others. Fine, fine, fine. Will you protect yourself, please? Please? Because if you've been following my channel for any length of time, you know, that we are overrun with narcissists. So we need you, we need you in this fight. We need you here, okay? We need you to survive. All right, with that, did Sean answer my questions? Let's see, Sean, are you gonna answer my questions for me? Calling me a scared donkey? You gonna answer my questions or not? Nah? With that, you guys, we are gonna go ahead and wrap this live stream up. I appreciate you all so very much. 
It's always fun, always. Every time I get on with you guys, I have a great time. It's one of my favorite things to do, if you can't tell. I enjoy spending this time with y'all, but I am gonna wrap it up. I'll probably be back again sometime this weekend talking about what, I don't know, but we'll have a good time regardless of what we discuss. But with that, you guys, please stay safe. Please stay healthy. If you choose to go out and celebrate 4th of July this weekend, please still try to maintain some sort of health conscious behaviors, okay? Because they're, oh, God, one more thing and then we'll go. I swear to God, one more thing, this is it. This is it, I promise. They are now, the kids are now having coronavirus parties, inviting people who have been infected and awarding prizes to whoever catches the virus first. California, I'm not kidding you. I shit you not. Let's see here. Get it up. Where is it? Is this it? Seven hours ago? I wonder if this is it. Let me type in coronavirus parties prize. Coronavirus parties prize. I Z E. Ah, yes. <laughs> yeah, indeed. Go make that big. Outstanding. Perfect. Flip flop my screen back over and then I promise this is it and then we'll go. Alabama students hold COVID-19 parties with prize for the first sick person. Tuscaloosa, Alabama, officials in an Alabama city said several college students organized COVID-19 parties as a contest to see who would get the virus first. Tuscaloosa City Councilor Sonia McKinstry said students hosted the parties to intentionally infect each other with the new coronavirus. McKinstry said party organizers purposely invited guests who tested positive for COVID-19 I don't know how much how much more sick does it get, guys? <laughs> Are we at rock bottom yet or do we still have a ways to go? They put money in a pot and they try to get COVID. Whoever gets COVID first gets the pot. It makes no sense, she said, according to the New York Post. Tuscaloosa Fire Chief Randy Smith confirmed the incidents to city council on Tuesday. Smith didn't say whether actions would be taken against the students. He also didn't say which schools the students attend. It makes me furious, McKinstry said in an interview with CNN, furious to the fact that something that is so serious and deadly is being taken for granted. It's also kind of sad, like it makes me sad. But anyway, not only is it irresponsible, but you could contract the virus and take it home to your parents or grandparents. Alabama has reported about 39,000 cases and its death toll is approaching 1,000. So the reason I wanted to share this story with you is to say, if you choose to go out this weekend and party, there are going to be people among you who are purposely just doing things like licking the cups, coughing on the bottles, coughing in the uh, keg, if the keg opens the top, I don't know if the tops of kegs open. I think they do, I don't know. Coughing in the keg, spitting in the keg, inviting someone who's sick. And the purpose behind it, their sick broken logic will be this. We're trying to prove that this is not a big deal. So we're gonna invite people who will actually have it, spread it to people unknowingly, just to show that nothing happens to them in a couple of weeks. I believe that's the logic that's driving these parties. They're trying to prove it's not a big deal. So I say all that to say, be safe, be careful, watch your drink, maybe only consume from drinks that have to be opened, like canned, canned beverages or bottles that have um, the bottle caps on them. But do not accept drinks from people right now because people are not well mentally or physically, because something has to be deeply wrong with you for you to think that this is okay. And for you to put on a coronavirus party with the express intent of getting people sick and people are actually coming and showing up on purpose to these parties. Okay. So if you don't think that this is lurking in your neighborhood and that your neighbor wouldn't purposely expose you to COVID on some sick, demented, alternative reality type you know, mission, 
you would be deadly wrong. Okay. So be careful, watch yourself, watch your drink and just stay as safe as you possibly can. Okay. All right. And with that, now I'm going to end the live stream. Okay. Thank you all so much for coming. You know, I appreciate you more than you could ever know. And we will talk again very soon. Okay. Bye.